Jamakoshi Niigata. A mountainous area where the majority of the Japanese koi breeders are located. It is the beginning of June and it's very hot with high humidity. Exactly the conditions that the koi breeder need for the new offspring. It's an exciting moment for the Shintara koi farm, in addition to the normal activities. This will be a long day and night for the entire staff. This time of the year, it's time for the parent koi to spawn and the important period of breeding and growing up Nishigigoi takes place. In the course of this program, we follow the Shintara koi farm during the entire breeding process. In this episode, the Shintara koi farm will show us exactly how breeders in Japan breed koi, from the preparations for the nursery to the actual breeding program. We do not skip anything and we show everything from the beginning to the end. The footage that you will see in this program, in both part 1 and part 2, are very unique and exclusive. It is at most special that a koi breeder gives us access during this process. Nothing can go wrong on this day. All ponds have been cleaned with military precision and only fresh water ensures the perfect growing conditions. Every smallest deviation can ensure that the fragile eggs will not hatch. Fortunately, the Shintara koi farm is a very experienced koi farm led by Masaru Saito. Knowledge and experience has been transferred from generation to generation. Masaru's son will be assisted by the entire staff, including his two sons, Kensuke and Kosuke. Both will have to do everything themselves in the future and have an important role in this breeding process today. The Shintara koi farm is known for their very high quality Gosanke and Yumbo koi that sometimes grow up to 90 cm. But before a fish reaches that length, each fish is on the same journey and at the Shintara koi farm this is the starting point. This is the breeding house. During cultivation, guests are usually not allowed, or only in very exceptional cases. Both males and females are placed in the ponds. When the female is ready to hatch, the male and female koi are placed together between the spawning ropes. With a little help from the staff, several couples will successfully contribute to the new generation of Nishigigoi tonight. It is around 10 o'clock in the evening and the fish are in the mood. It will not be long before the first female fish release their eggs. Because the eggs have to be collected, everyone is alert to the first signals. You can only do it once. When the time is right, Masaro-san will start the whole process. Finally, the moment is there. The females are ready to release their first eggs. Kensuke and Kosuke catches the females Nishikigoi and let them settle in a separate tank before the process can actually start. It is very important that the Showa females settle down before the eggs are extracted. Kensuke-san therefore allows the Showa to swim in a separate tank for about one hour. Tonight the farm will spawn two sets of Showa, two sets of Sanke and one set of the Kohaku variety. Most with human intervention, but the Kohakus will spawn completely natural. Every year the Shintaro koi farm gains more insight into the development of the different bloodlines with the aim of striving for perfection. For that reason, all data is kept carefully. The amount of eggs and, for example, the water temperatures.
The koi will be put to sleep briefly so they don't notice anything from the egg removal. Everything happens in an animal friendly way where the health of these koi are the most important thing. Parent animals are the foundation of any koi farm. So all parent animals deserve only the very best care. It is absolutely very important that the fish are very calm. The faster he or she will fall asleep, this will make removing the eggs or sperm much faster. It is finally going to start. The female Showa is first to act. The opening and belly are now cleaned with a saline solution to ensure that all germs are removed. After drying the fish, the koi is wrapped in a towel and the extraction can start. The eggs are gently massaged loose and collected in a sterile bowl. The Nishikigoi is completely under anesthesia and does not notice the entire process at all. Because the Nishikigoi sleeps, all her muscles are completely relaxed, so all the eggs can be removed. It is very important that all the eggs are collected. If you do not do this properly, it can cause future health problems for the koi. Once all eggs have been collected, the eggs are carefully packed and weighted. The female is immediately returned to recover from the extraction. Several hundred thousand eggs of this Nishikigoi are ready to be fertilized with the seed of the male koi. It is time for the next female. After this, the first male will donate his sperm and fertilize all the eggs.
what you can clearly see is that this female has a swollen vent, a sign that the koi is ready to start. This koi has considerably more eggs than the previous one. It differs per koi, and based on the weight of the eggs, an estimate will be made of the absolute numbers. Once outside, everything is ready to fill the first spawning ropes with the fertilized eggs. But before that, a man has to be added to the process. Back in the koi house, the staff noticed that the kohakus can continue without people's help. These eggs are fertilized in a natural way, and after that they will be collected. The sets of kohaku are put together. Because these kohakus can reproduce without the help of the breeder, the focus for now is on the male fish from which the sperm must be collected. It is now almost 2 o'clock in the morning and the cultivation is now running at full speed. Like a well-oiled machine, the team works together to successfully complete the mission. The male koi is now well asleep. Collecting can finally start. An empty syringe is used and the contents are then placed in a large jar with liquid. It is very important to collect as much liquid from the mill as possible so that the maximum number of eggs can be fertilized.
Once ready, the fish is given a shot of antibiotics and allowed to relax in one of the ponds. It is time for perhaps the most important part of this video. The eggs are mixed with the sperm. The koi are about to become parents to hundreds of thousands of their own offspring. Masaru-san divides the eggs and mixes them with the seed of one of the male fish. Masaru uses a sterile dividing tool, which ensures that the fertilized eggs can be distributed evenly over the spawning ropes. Thousands of koi are now at the beginning of their life journey. One that may end up in your own pond, or at one of the largest koi shows in the world. Maybe the future champion can be grown here, in one of those tanks. The eggs will attach to the hairs of the spawning ropes within minutes. They are clearly visible, and it will only take two days before the first eyes are visible. After three days, the eggs will hatch. Even the eggs that do not attach to the spawning ropes will accompany their brothers and sisters at the bottom of the tank. It is now well into the night, and the tiring and hard work has paid off. The last eggs are collected from one of the female fish. I'm very grateful to the Shintaro Koi Farm that their hospitality and support for the channel. These unique images provide an insight into their work by one of the most famous breeders from Japan. At the end of the video I have prepared two new videos for you that you must see. In part 2 of this program the eggs will hatch and the fish will be selected. Don't forget to subscribe, please like the video and let me know in the comments if you liked it.